a model which is called variational autoencoder. In variational autoencoder, we would like this hidden space to have certain distribution. We want the distribution of the hidden space to be Gaussian. And why this is a good thing to have a Gaussian distribution here, if I'm sure that the distribution of this hidden space is Gaussian, then I can sample from a Gaussian, forget this part of the model, sample from a Gaussian, and feed this network, this part of the network. We call this network a generative network. So I feed this one with a, a, a data point that I've, that I've sampled from a Gaussian. And it goes through this generative model and it generates a point similar to the point that the, the model has been trained with. Okay, that's, yes? So why Gaussian instead of like uniform or any other? You could do different things actually. But in, in variation, I mean, in adversarial autoencoder, you can choose anything. It adversarial, in uh, variational autoencoder, if you choose Gaussian, the form of the cost function would be easier. Uh, roughly, the cost function would be the same cost function plus a regularization form. And this regularization form is KL divergence between some distribution that you sample from and uh, which is Gaussian, for example, and this hidden space. So meanwhile that you're minimizing the reconstruction, you want to uh, make sure that this distribution is close to Gaussian. So adversarial, I mean, adversarial networks is pretty hot topic of research, introduced in 2014. And uh, it introduced in the uh, form of generative models. Uh, and recently it has been applied to autoencoder. So the intuitive idea behind this is quite uh, simple. So suppose that I have the same goal. I have an autoencoder and I want to make sure that this distribution is Gaussian. And instead of adding a regularization term to my cost function in the form of KL divergence, and there's other variations in the form of maximum mean discrepancy. It's called uh, uh, moment matching network. So instead of adding a part to the cost function, we are doing a, a completely different things. Suppose that I have two networks and these two networks are competing with each other. I have this autoencoder. This is just a traditional autoencoder. But I want to make sure that this is Gaussian or any other distribution. I'm going to have another network here, and this network is a classifier, a discriminative model. So this classifier, I fit it with points that have been sampled from my ultimate distribution. I want them to be Gaussian. I sample from Gaussian, and I send it to this classifier. Let's call these samples that I draw from uh, Gaussian positive samples. The hidden space here, I fit it to the classifier as well. Let's call those negative uh, samples. My job is to fool this classifier. Okay, I want to change this hidden space in a way that this classifier cannot make distinction between points that have been sampled from P and points that are generated here. Okay? So basically, uh, you have a classifier and you want to fool the classifier to not be able to distinguish between these two sources of input. Does it come from a Gaussian or does it come from this? And you, you, you train everything together, basically. You know, it's not a pre-trained classifier. You train this classifier, you train your model, and iteratively, basically, it would be one iteration on this network and one iteration on this network. Up to the point, yes? Is this Sorry? Is this the yeah, there, there are many, many versions of this, you know, to, to facilitate the, uh, basically the training.
one iteration on this side, one iteration on the other side, or together. And there are many, many other different variations. Depends on the structure of the network. But anyway, uh, when this classifier is not able to tell me points comes from here or here, I'm done. Okay, so I, 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 I'm sure that the distribution of my hidden space here, latent space, is the same as the distribution of my uh, Gaussian. So this is just now I show you a couple, uh, some result. It, it works pretty well in practice. This very simple idea works quite well in practice. This is uh, MNIST data, 10 digits, when hidden space are sampled from a two-dimensional and you have to fold the classifier. Yeah, and that's the difference. Yes. It's a one hot vector. So if, you know, now I, I have the labels. You know, I pretend that I have the labels. It's a supervised problem. I'm fitting one to the network, for example. Then my hot, a one hot vector would be one, zero, zero, zero. And when I'm fitting two to the network, my one hot vector would be zero, one, zero, zero, zero. Okay. In this version, it doesn't combine with the top. Okay. So you're fitting one, and you hint the classifier that, uh, you know, for, for all ones, you use this one hot vector. For all zeros, you use this one hot vector. So each time classifier knows that it's a different set of data, it needs to use a different. What's the output? Output of what? The, the bottom. It's a classifier again. So all of them are ones with this one hot vector here. And then this is supposed to get fooled. You know, it's supposed to not make distinction between whatever you are generating here and what have been sampled from the Gauss. OK. Uh, just let me show you, you know, it's not just for digits, you know, this has been sample, uh, has been trained on faces, and these faces are faces generated by the network, not faces that have been generated, not faces that are in the data set. Uh, these are also sampled, this is uh, a street uh, number data set. Uh, these are, uh, those that have been sampled from, uh, has been generated by the network. There are other variations for semi-supervised version, uh, which we don't have time to actually cover. I just show you that it can do something interesting, okay? So uh, if there's any question, I will answer the question after the class because we're gonna have three presentations now. And so I don't want to waste the presenter's time. So that was basically was our last lecture. There's going to be one uh, makeup class, but uh, we have covered whatever we needed to cover in this course. Okay, thanks.